Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and what you see behind me are the trays that I compost in with worms and one of the bins has not been fed in about a week now. I think it was exactly a week ago today that we last checked in on it and it's the bin that you see right here. It's the, um, it's the one that I refer to as my mixed bin of worms and it's already received 14 feedings so today's feeding is going to be its 15th feeding and the bin that you see right next to it is a bin that I actually started migrating the worms out of. So this bin also received 15 feedings, then I let it sit for about three weeks, and then I started feeding it on one edge of the bin to see if I could lure the worms out of the material. And I believe that I'm about to start that same process here in this bin. Hey Siri, how many days have passed since the 12th of May? It was 132 days ago. All right, so 132 days is a pretty respectable amount of time for a worm bin to run. And if you've been following along on my channel, then you'll notice that there's a little something different here on this bin than the way we left it. When we last checked in on this bin and fed it a week ago, we did cover it with, oh my goodness, we did cover it with this piece of cardboard. And the whole idea was to help it maintain its moisture level. And then I came down here maybe a day or two after we had fed it and I took that cardboard off just to allow for a little bit of evaporation so I mean I guess you know why I'm reacting the way I did a moment ago when I said oh gosh or whatever it is that I said it's because there's a whole bunch of dead worms out here on the surface and there is one here that's still alive the poor little guy let's get them off this piece of cardboard I don't know is it is it possible that a worm just can't figure out how to get off of a piece of cardboard that's going to just lead to it drying out and dying there? Ugh. I don't know. There was a little issue going on with this bin after we fed it recently. And um, I think it was probably because I was so uh, aggressive, if you want to say, or you know, very forceful in the way that I stirred the material in the bin around and I think I had just disrupted the worms to the point where they kind of got bugged out and started wandering all over the place so what ended up happening was I started seeing worms all over the walls of the container and um, I was worried that they'd be crawling out of the bin and falling out and dropping down into other worm bins that are other breeds of worms and I didn't want to have these worms kind of cross-contaminating the population of my other bins that are you know specifically one or another type of worm and you know obviously it was also concern over the well-being of the worms I didn't want them climbing out and drying out and dying so it's always unfortunate to look in a worm bin and see that happening but um uh, it's a little bit dark over here I'm gonna grab this bin put on a glove and we're gonna get closer look at what's happening here over on the bench so uh, let's get to that now so to prevent the climbing that I mentioned earlier I did actually come into the bin with a little bit of salty water and just wipe down the walls of the container so that the walls would have a little bit of residual salt on it after the moisture evaporated away and then I ran a time lapse just to kind of observe the reaction of the worms should they crawl over and attempt to crawl onto the wall and they would always come over and probe over it and feel the surface of the wall of the box and sense the salt and worms don't like salt so um, all I all I really saw was the um, the worms kind of thinking that they might want to crawl up the wall but they never did and I don't know where this little creature came from. Looks like it's some sort of little uh, larva, of some sort of bug. But you know it doesn't really belong in my worm bin as far as I'm concerned so I'm pulling it out. Okay so I, I did share my experience with the whole climbing and attempt of these worms to escape from the bin um, on my channel with a video. I, I time-lapsed, at first I time-lapsed just what was going on here in the bin when I observed the climbing and I saw a bunch of worms climbing so I came back um, with the time lapse once again and shot some footage after I did the salt treatment of the walls of the bin and after that I saw that there was no more climbing so I didn't really think there was any reason for any fur further concern in this bin 
and I did kind of arrive at sort of a, a um, an assumptive conclusion as to what had caused all that climbing type behavior and I just assumed it was the tilling up of the materials because the climbing seemed like it just started occurring almost immediately after I um, had fed and closed things up here so I don't think it was actually the heating up of the foods that I had put in here driving them away and it wasn't even that much food that I had put in here so if there was a little bit of heating up occurring down here where the food was applied the worms would have had plenty of space to, you know, um, retreat to, to get away from any sort of excessive heat that could have been building up around the feeding area. And then, you know, people also inform me about the behavior, typical behavior of these worms, since the majority of the worms that are in here are, I believe, to be um, Indian blue worms. A lot of people did say that they're kind of skittish and they um, tend to react to things, you know, so at the drop of a hat they could potentially start, you know, wanting to flee the bin for whatever reason. You know, people cited the possibility that maybe there were some atmospheric conditions changing, like maybe stormy weather on the way that could have triggered that behavior, but there was nothing of that nature going on in my area. So I, I've kind of chalked it up to uh, my rough behavior. And, you know, I guess hopefully if I am rough with them again today, hopefully there's enough salt <laughs> remaining on the walls of this container to prevent them from wanting to climb again. So I'm going to uh, keep my fingers crossed for that. I might even, after I get done here feeding, I might just leave the bin up on the bench and perhaps set up a little bit of a time-lapse um, video film shoot here after I'm done just to get a little bit of an insight into what's happening once I finish feeding this bin and what happens afterwards. Because if, they, you know, if they're going to continuously climb and be that way, um, you know, I want to, I want to know. Wow, look at that. Every now and then we grab a handful of stuff out of this container and we find just a ton of these little worms hanging out together. And I know a lot of times mobbing behavior could be a, a sign of distress, that the worms are kind of huddling together because the material they're in is unbearable to them. My hope is that they're just kind of huddling around a chunk of the food that I had given them last time. Although I, I didn't really expect to find much leftovers of the food I gave them last time. I gave them some frozen cauliflower. And there was some coffee added as food too. But I figured after a week, there wouldn't be any leftovers of that. But maybe that's exactly what we're seeing down here. You know what? Actually, it was last week when we, um, when we checked in here last time and I noticed this mobbing behavior. It was around these mango seed husks. So I think that this little ball might have actually been on or around that um, mango mango seed. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Here again, I'm just kind of theorizing. But I, um, I think I'm just going to go upstairs to the refrigerator and grab them one last feeding. I do believe that after a 15th feeding that we're applying today, this bin is looking quite mature. And I think we are going to start trying to uh, steer it towards harvest at some point soon. So what I'll normally do is when I decide that I've given the bin its last feeding, I switch over to a, a period of time where the bin doesn't receive any fresh foods. And then I let the worms, you know, dine on whatever still remains in the bin. Stuff like this, all these little leaf stems or some of the things that I really like to see them break down. Any little bits of, you know, remaining bedding chunks or food scraps that might still be in here. So that's my game plan. And it does seem like this is a pretty capable bin. It does seem to do away with all of its foods pretty quickly, whatever I feed it. And when you look around, you can see there is a pretty good sized population in here. I think that might have been another theory that somebody threw out there was that, hey, you know, maybe the population has just grown to the point where they're feeling crowded and they, you know, um, they're just following their instincts to go find a new place to set up, set up a new um, location to live just because of the high number of worms living here together. So whatever the reason, it does seem like it's about time to start um, driving this bin towards harvest. So I'm going to run upstairs. 
I'll grab some food to throw in here, and then uh, and then we'll be done. As I usually do, I'm giving the worms coffee, because there's always coffee around here. <laughs> and I just reached into my um, freezer bag to grab a couple handfuls of um, potato peels and cucumber peels. And there was just a piece of um, leftover pepper from yesterday sitting there on the counter. So I just gra grabbed that as well. And that seems like a pretty good feeding for these little guys. Oh, jeez. <laughs> just so interesting. Can't seem to resist going back to this ball of worms to play around with them. So we'll uh, we'll just hope that me being so interactive with them, <laughs> all this manhandling, doesn't cause them to want to flee the bin. But my hope is that the treatment that I gave the walls of the container are you know sufficient to keep them contained and not be able to leave the bin. So let's um. Let's just grab a little bit of paper to drop in here along with the feeding to go hand in hand with the feeding, a little bit of bedding to accompany the food. And then we could take these older chunks of food as a little piece of corn cob. There was another half of the mango seed here. Or did I already? There it is. So it does seem like this is pretty popular. Maybe I'll put these two back together because if that really is what's drawing them, then I'd like to know. And then maybe we'll be able to zero in on that a little bit more readily next time we come in here. The food was, I don't know, maybe about two handfuls worth, which is what I typically try to measure my feedings by as far as like using handfuls. Because maybe someday my tracking will become a little bit more detailed and then I can start equating what I would consider a, a quote unquote standard feeding which usually consists of two handfuls to some measure of weight you know and um, or some average measure of weight and then I could start um, maybe coming up with some more interesting facts and figures for us to contemplate in the future <laughs> but I mean I, I think I did try it once where I thought I would start weighing each portion of food that each bin got and keeping track of all that too and um, that got really old really quick <laughs> and I lost interest in doing that pretty much immediately but it did seem like it would be an interesting metric and if you can sort of uh, standardize on the amount that you feed regularly or come up with some sort of standard measure and then just refer to that as hey they got a standard feeding or they got double the standard feeding or something like that then it doesn't get into this extra step of having to weigh and record and calculate and all that crazy extra work it's just some sort of a standard feeding size to abide by on each occasion and then that information can maybe translate into some other interesting stuff later so not much left to do here other than leave these guys to be at this point so we're going to uh we're going to now officially in my tracking spreadsheet re reclassify this bin as no longer being one of my active composting bins somewhat reducing my ability to do away with kitchen scraps and household waste that I would normally feed to the worms this bin will just be in foraging mode and foraging just refer refers to the the action of the worms them you know just picking through what remains in the system and finding their source of food and nourishment um, out in the out in the bedding out in the material that they occupy hopefully resulting in a bin full of really nice finished castings free of little particles free of little scraps of leftover food and bedding and you know that's always kind of a um, a factor of you know how much of that stuff still remains in the bin how much um, how, how hard it is for the worms to break that particular stuff down, how many worms you have. I'm sure temperature, moisture, other factors also play into it. Um, so we'll see, you know, we'll see how long it takes for this to sort of transform form from a, a fairly mature bin with lots of castings plus a lot of food scraps and bedding scraps into something that's, you know, predominantly castings anymore. So, Gosh, I really hope these little guys don't start bugging out again. 
And um, I'm even thinking instead of putting that little tent up with the cardboard, may maybe it was just the fact that they had that dark space under the cardboard where they felt comfortable in terms of not being exposed to the bright light. And then they found themselves out on a dry material and it ended up being their demise. Perhaps if all I do is just leave it covered like this, the bright lights out here will be sufficient to keep them um, down within the bed versus having them explore and uh, venture out into a dangerous dry area. So uh, I don't know. I'm always kind of turning the screws and making fine adjustments to the way I do things in the hopes that I could come up with a good process that worked consistently. And with these um, Indian blue worms, I'm still kind of learning their mannerisms, their behavior, their tendencies. And they're a little different from what I'm used to, I must admit. <laughs> so that's it for today's video. Um, not putting the cardboard on. We're going to just leave it the way it is, put it back up on the shelf, and hope that the salt solution that I applied a week ago is going to keep them in. Um, but you know what? Maybe on second thought, maybe I will set up the time lapse and just use that as sort of my... Uh, my monitor on what's happening here for the next few hours just so I can review that later and assure myself that nothing crazy went on down here. But as far as this video is concerned, it's done. We're finished here. I'll take care of putting all this stuff away and getting stuff cleaned up, but I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm going to sign off now, but before I do, let me just say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's always really appreciated, and if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.